Now, some women's rights groups have criticised charity UN Women UK for selecting a transgender model as its UK champion, as one of its UN ch UK champions. Yes, organisations including Fair Play for Women and Sex Matters have labelled Bergdorf unsuitable and highlighted previous online posts made by Monroe, which were in quotes, homophobic and racist, leading to Childline dropping her as an ambassador in 2019. Well, joining us now is the co-founder and executive director of Sex Matters, Maya Forstarter, and thank you uh, for making the time for us this afternoon. I suppose many people will be thinking that the UN uh, is, a, is a credible organisation that must represent all different types of, of people. And, and I suppose the, the question is, is there not room in the UN women tent to have one of its ambassadors being a transgender woman? I think we need to be clear about the language here. When you say a transgender woman, what you mean is a man who wishes he was a woman um, and a man who dresses up in women's clothing um, and wants to be treated as a woman. But that doesn't make someone a woman. That's not what being a woman means. And the UN if, you to, if you were to look at Munro Bergdorf walking down the street, uh, would, would you think that this individual is a man? She's someone who has secondary sex characteristics of a woman. She looks like a woman. She is a woman in the eyes of UK law. Bergdorf looks like a man's sexual fantasy of what a woman is. Um, I don't know if I saw... Bergdorf walking down the street, uh, whether I would clock him, but I think I probably would. Um, it's quite difficult to see from, you know, sort of glamour shots, the size, the way someone moves, the way they sound. But in any case, um, women shouldn't be having to make those kinds of judgments when they're using single sex spaces. And UN Women is campaigning against mm. women being sexually harassed and for women to have uh, what they call safe spaces. And the question about whether a man convincingly looks like a woman or whether he just thinks he does is not something that women should have to worry about. Maya, why do you think uh, this UN charity has chosen uh, this transgender woman to represent British women? Why do you think they've done that? Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask them. I think they're trolling British women. They're saying there are 33 million women in Britain and none of them are good enough for this job, so let's get a man who dresses up as a sexual fantasy of a woman. I think it's an insult. Mayam, are some of the charities that have written about this and have objected to this have uh, drawn on some of her more con controversial um, opinions and social media tweets. What else is out there that people have objected to? Um, I mean, as I said, it, it, the, the basic objection is that Munro Bergdorf is a man, um, but there are also things in his history that are concerning. Um, for example, asking children who are gender confused to DM him and contact him um, personally. This is why he was dropped as a um, ambassador for the NSPCC, because that is absolutely against safeguarding. Uh, you know, whether he was doing it with the best of motives or or not, uh, you don't ask children to get in direct contact with strange adults on the internet. You just don't do that. My, my you keep saying him. And I just wonder if, if, if you're trying to sort of Sorry, bring people with dropped. you... Oh no! I'm this, oh, let's let's hope we can get the sound re-established here because I think this is an in, important point because th th there are of course legitimate debates to be had in terms of. I'm sorry, no one, no one, everyone of, has a right to not use someone's preferred pronouns. A, a right in law, but I'm asking whether or not it's polite or but even. Maya effective. fundamentally believes that men can't change their gender and become a woman, and that is her right. To believe that she's director of sex matters she obviously finds this massively insulting mm. that we'd have a representative of women who's not a biological woman and i think that's a fair enough point of view i uh, I, I wonder because there, there Maya's are back, there, the oh Maya's back fantastic <laughs> I, i'm sorry that we dropped out with the sound there uh, because what i was going to ask i suppose is do you think it's particularly effective 
for your cause, trying to bring as many people with you as possible, because there are legitimate debates to be had about access to spaces or indeed sporting facilities. But by insisting on calling trans women men and saying he rather than she, do you think that's where most people are? Do you think that's going to be the best way to bring people with you? Why are we unhappy that Munro Bergdorf is, uh, has been appointed to this post? It's because he's a man. Why do we not want people who call themselves trans women competing in women's sports? It's because they're men. Why do we not want them in women's spaces? It's because they're men. If we can't say that, how can we protect women's rights? Well, obviously, they'd argue that they're not men, that they go out of their way well, uh, and go exactly. through uh, a pretty, pretty uh, torrid yeah. time to not be men. And, and perhaps there are many trans women in the United Kingdom who face exactly the same sort of catcalling, who face the same sort of sexual assault, who face the same sort of misogyny that many women do going about their daily lives too. I'm not sure you're right on that one, Tom. No, I, I don't think you're right. And, and that, that, you know, I have no idea what it feels like to be a man who wishes he was a woman. And a man who wishes he has a woman has no idea what it feels like to be a woman. He doesn't go through anything to do with having a woman's body, pregnancy, fear of pregnancy, fear of men who are much bigger and stronger, whatever they're wearing. Uh, those are not experiences that a man can, can have, whatever he's wearing, however good his makeup. Well, there you go. Thank you very much indeed, Maya Forstatter, uh, co-founder and executive director of Sex Matters. You're not going to budge on that with you, Tom? No, I think, I think, we're, gonna, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree there. But I, think, I do think there is, there is a point that there are lots of trans women uh, who aren't six foot five. There are lots of trans women who... Uh, go through life and do face the same sort of Yes, but, Tom, you're a, you're a very rational and logical person. You know there is a difference between a biological woman and a, and a transgender woman. You do know that there is I, a I know there's a chromosomal difference. difference I've heard I you that... argue that, actually, um, biological men, uh, transgender women, should be able to compete in, in women's sports. Um, on a case-by-case -case basis. No, so there's I think no you time should, for I think case, you should, case. I think you should, So, for example, if there's a, if there's a very petite... That's next ridiculous. to no muscle mass individual. That's ridiculous. I think you should take it on You have to have a broad brush case. approach. Let us know what you think. GBviews at gbnews.com. Contentious, as always, here on Good Afternoon Britain. We like to bring all sides of the debate.